name is Patricia Holmes, and we are working on uh, our last chapter uh, for the class. This is chapter 13, and we are preparing files for the web. And in this lesson, we're going to build uh, buttons uh, for a web page that is going to be used um, on a website. And we're also going to make graphic files uh, for buttons. And uh, we're, we'll talk about how these will apply to not only websites, but mobile devices as well. So as you can imagine, graphic and graphic design uh, and the internet go hand in hand. I mean, you, you can't have a mobile app or a website without a really good looking uh, graphic in the in the uh, the eye of the viewer. So what we're looking at here is the completed version of what we're ultimately going to rebuild. The author has provided us a final image so we know what we're building and we're focusing our work on building the bottom four buttons for the web page. These are going to be graphic buttons uh, and so the, these four, all everything Everything we need is provided. We're just going to be uh, using the Photoshop skills to take these images and turn them into a button. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to close this out, this 13N out. And what I'd like for you to do is open up a 13 start PSD file. And when you do um, open that up, you're going to see these lines and everything on there. And that's okay. We're going to go ahead and close these lines out. So you're going to go view and uncheck the extra. We're going to enlarge this a little bit so we can see our first button right here. And we're also going to make sure our layers, our layer panel is, is open. We're going to click on image one. So I just blinded that eye just to double check that that's the image. Okay, so the author is going to have us put um, a button underneath this image that we're ultimately going to be using. So before we begin, let's go ahead and go File, Save As, and save it as a different name so we can preserve the original start file. So we're going to call this Working. And we're going to hit Save. Hit OK. And then we're going to go and we're going to edit some of the preferences so if you're using a Mac, we're going to go into Photoshop, we're going to go Preferences, and we are going to go Units and Rulers. The author wants us to edit Units and Rulers, and I'll tell you in a second how we uh, change that for Windows. So once we get in here, we are going to make sure that um, Pixels, the number one thing that we're being asked is that the units area in the dialog box is under pixels. Units, here it is right here, units, choose pixels for the ruler. So it's mainly the ruler. Okay, then we're going to hit OK on that one. Okay, now if you are working on a PC, how you get to the edits, uh, the units and ruler, is you'll choose edit, preferences, and then uh, units and rulers. So for Windows, again, edit, preferences, units and rulers. I can't show you because I'm recording this on a Mac. So for Macs, one more time, Photoshop CC, preferences, units and rulers. Okay, so now we um, got the rulers on pixels. We, the author is asking us next to go into view and then snap. And we're, what, what we're making sure is that that is not, that is not checked. Often by default that's checked, so make sure that's not checked. Then we're going to go choose uh, Window, Info, because we're going to open up this Info panel, and we're going to uh, use it in just a second. Okay. Next, if you're following me in the book, uh, we are going on to go to View, and rulers should be turned on. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we are going to... Okay, let me read this to you. 
um, choose view rulers, then position the pointer over the horizontal ruler, drag the ruler guide down to the Y value. Okay, got it. So we got the rulers on. So we're going to come over here and we're going to just drag a ruler. Come on, let me grab this. That is not working. Control Z, let me check this again. View ruler. All right, so what you normally do is you just put your mouse over the ruler. Okay, here we go, this time it's working. And we're dragging it down to 795. 795. All right, 795 it is. Okay, and um, then what we're going to do is we're going to design our first button. So we're going to click the new layer button at the bottom of the layer panel. So come over here to the layer panel, and right here we're going to go new layer. If you hover your mouse over it, you'll see it. So we're going to create a new layer button, and we're going to rename this button by double-clicking it. And the author wants us to name it band, B-A-N-D. Then we're going to select the, we're going to come over here to the toolbar. We're going to select the rectangle marquee tool. And we're going to drag a selection at the bottom of this image. And the selection should be 180 pixels wide and 33 pixels high. So let's go 180 wide, and it's okay if we overshoot it, because I'll show you how to fix that. 180 wide, and what is it? 33 high, so let's drop it down. All right, let go. Now, if you use your arrow key on your keyboard, you can just bump this thing around to get it perfect. Sweet. Okay, so we did that. Now we are going to go to Edit, Fill, and we're going to make sure we choose Color from the content. So come over here, choose Color, and then the author, you can pick a dark blue, but the author actually gave us an RGB color. Here's RGB, red, green, blue mixture. So I already put this in here, 25, 72, and 121. If you want to type that in. You can. Otherwise, just pick a blue about this, this dark, this color. Click OK. And click OK again. And you're going to see that that blue just filled in. Click Command D to deselect it. OK, so we are preparing our button. Next, we are going to type, put some text in here. So we're going to hit the horizontal type tool. Make sure it's on horizontal. Yep, and we're going to click the Myrid Pro. Author wants us to choose regular, 18 font, strong, centered, the text to be white. And uh, we're going to click in the center of this blue band, and we're going to type in Gallery 1, and we need it in all capitals. And don't worry about the position. We can reposition it. Gallery 1. Okay. Use your Move tool, which is the top, very, very foremost top tool, and move it around. And let's see. That looks really good. So next what we're going to do is um, the author would like us to add some style to it. So we're going to select image one in the layer panel. So let's come over here. Let's go image one in the layer panel. Then we're going to add a layer style. You can click FX. That's one way of doing it. And choose drop shadow at the very bottom. And so on this drop shadow, we want the opacity per the author to be 
the distance of the shadow to be 9, the spread of the shadow to be 19, and the size to be 18. And um, so with this layer style still, with this dialog box still open, we're going to select the stroke. Make sure you click on that. That changes the menu. And we're going to make the size of the stroke one pixel. We're going to want the, the position of the stroke to be an inside stroke. And for the color, click the color swatch. We're going to click the, okay, click color picker, then click the blue. Okay, the blue is already here. So you can, if you click the swatch, you can, you can type in, um, uh, let's see, we're going to type in, it was 25, 72, I'm going off memory here. I guess I should turn the page back and look. Um, I want to say 72 and 21. Do, 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 do. Yes, bingo. I was right. 25, 72, and 21. 121. Okay, so then we're going to click. Okay, so anyway, if you click anything, if you click the blue close to that, that's perfectly fine. Um, okay, so what we just did was we added on this image. I don't know if you can see it. My arrow is pointing at it right here. We added a shadow, a bit of a shadow to it. And uh, we also added um, a little itsy bitsy blue line, a one pixel line. And that was the stroke we just added. Okay, then we clicked OK. All right. Um, next, what we're going to do, the button looks good. So. Um, we are going to select the gallery. So we're going to come over here to the layers. Let me push this layer down. Okay. So we have three we just worked on. We have the gallery one. We have the band and the image one. And the author is asking us to select all three of them. So I'm holding the shift key down. I'm selecting all three of them. And we are going to go layer group layers, layer, and we are going to go group layers, which is right here in the middle. Click that. And then Photoshop puts them basically all in a folder, and it's by default it's going to be called group one. And we're going to double click that. The author wants us instead to name it gallery one. Gallery one. Okay, then uh, we're going. The author wants us to expand it to see our our work. We just put it in there. We just put it in there, and then we're going to hit save. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to be duplicating these steps for the next few buttons. So there's a quicker, easier way to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the Create a New Group button. So I think what I'm going to do right now is to keep these videos short. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. We'll pick up the Create the Group button uh, in the very next video. Okay, thanks for listening.